What's up, YouTube? So today we're gonna to be doing a down and dirty on the two most commonly used salts that I use. Um, it, we are dealing with some uh, pretty nasty cold temperatures, hence why I'm all bundled up out here. And I'm just trying to get this done and get inside so I'm not turning heater on today. So yeah, just be aware if you're ever are running power tools with long sleeves. Make sure you take an extra second to watch where your sleeves are. It is a big safety issue. Um, like this coat's actually designed to uh, be tight fitting yet still give me full flexibility where I don't even realize it, I even wear it. Um, that's specifically why I actually bought this one because I really do like it. Um, with that said, we're gonna jump straight into the saws because I can't quite see my breath, but I'm our, my hands are already going numb from being out here and I've been outside for less than five minutes. So I might actually break and turn a heater on for doing the other saw, which, all right. Just realized I might not have the wrenches I need, which would be a problem because it's set up to do something totally different. Mm -hmm that I'll actually be talking about here in a minute. Specifically, since they're right here, how to cut teeth. And the only time I make an exception to not using a certain safety feature, which I gotta find before we go to the next step. So I will cut to the miter saw here in a minute. All right, and here's the beast of the shop. This is the biggest saw I own. It takes a 12 inch circular blade right there. It's almost to the point where it needs to be replaced and I gotta figure out how to do that because I've never actually changed the blade on this thing in the almost six years I've had it. Although I'm thinking about selling this one and upgrading to the newer version because I really like having the shadow line feature on them which is where it has a light up in here. You tap your trigger, it shines a light and it shows you exactly where your blade's gonna cut. It is really handy, I do have a miniature one that takes the same blade as most um, circular saws that you see on construction sites that are hand powered. I will be doing videos on those. I use them, but not very often. I'm not the greatest with one, but uh, I'm far from the worst. So I actually use one when I'm cutting down lumber for when I buy it at the store if it doesn't quite fit in the car. So yeah. Um, with that, we're gonna cut some top blanks today. I got two boards to rip through, so I'm gonna put you on the other side so you can see where I'm actually cutting. And I'll show you all the trick, tips and tricks I personally use to cut with this particular type of saw. And uh, yeah, we'll go over everything it does in general, like, but uh, yeah. So I'm going to grab the wood and the piece I had to measure everything out with, which I already have up here, which I didn't realize I had one up here. Good to know. So yeah, I'm going to grab the two boards and we're going to get busy because it's cold. All right, and we're back. So this is the other side of the miter saw. When I say features that it has, the whole point of these is I can cut any angle I need up to, I forget, I gotta get the sawdust out of the way. I can go up to 60 degrees this way and 50 degrees on the other side. There are fast locks for uh, different angles that are fairly common. That's for doing stuff like if you're making an octagon tray or something like that. That comes in very, it's a very nice feature to have. Before I start, I always try to knock off all the, anything that's loose on the table, especially that's right up against this fence. And when I, when you're ready to start cutting, I never trust factory edges. They, uh, I have no idea where that cut. My Bluetooth decided to start playing music and stop the video. 
But yeah, so this can swing up to 50 degrees in either direction. Well, 50 degrees to the left, 60 degrees to the right. And there's another piece down here I can loosen. That'll allow me to actually uh, cut a, what's called a double bubble. It's a very handy feature to have if you're trying to do certain joinery techniques to be able to cut it two directions at once. And this is also what's known as a sliding miter saw, so it actually moves back and forth. Kind of takes part of the old radial arm saws. And again, I don't know what was cut, and I'm just gonna put these together because it's cold and I'm in a hurry. So I always cut about a half, about an eighth to a quarter inch off the original the edge from the factory because I want to make sure it's straight for what I'm doing. So This one actually doesn't feel like it's too far off, but I'd still, I always feel better when I can take a little bit off. That way I know it's good to go. There we go. Cause you don't need much, but this wood generally doesn't have staples, nails, anything in the ends. Cause they actually put a sticker with all the information on instead of stapling it, which makes it a little nicer. So I don't have to take off as much. So here comes our first cut. I didn't actually burn it. There was a little bit of a wave to that end, which I did just take out as well, which is really nice. I don't like having to fight that, so. I got supports on the side of the stand for this that I can shove out, which helps keep everything stable, consistent. So there's two ways you can use this. You can either take a pencil and your piece and mark it, but I find it's a whole lot easier to set your block down or whatever you're cutting if it's the same as, like th these are all gonna be the same length today. Like my cutting boards, they're usually, I buy two different types of wood, hardwood like this that's rough cut quarter inch panels like this that are cut to 24 inches. What I usually do is just take one of these, line it up with my saw blade with this against the blade. That way everything stays nice and consistent in length. So when I'm done, I don't, I'm not wasting any of the expensive thick wood. And uh, yeah, so some of these might be might vary a little bit. It doesn't matter for these. It does matter for other projects. So uh, just know I'm doing a rough job. And this is how I always cut pen blanks because, or I'm sorry, top blanks or pen blanks for that matter. It doesn't matter if they're exactly perfect because I mean, there's always going to be a little bit of variance. And I do take the ends of cutting boards like this one. Eventually, once it's warmer out, I will rip it down for uh, heads. They actually look really cool as well, if you ask me. But yeah, so I'm going to cut a couple of these and we're going to pop it to a time lapse. You will see I'm switching to a different board in the middle. Like I said, I got two of these today and the other one's a lot thicker. Well, a lot wider. They're both the same thickness, about two inches. So here we go. <laughs> table saw to rip them down with the grain which is also that's why I say rip it's a rip cut rip cut goes with the grain cross cut goes against the grain so if you ever were watching other woodworkers or hear me say rip cut or cross cut that's all it means a cross cut goes against the grain whether it's you know, whether we're cutting a 
an angle in it or we're just doing a straight 90. It's always a cross cut for that. When I do cut these, I try to uh, only use the first length block for the overall length, just because it does help keep the uh, differences between them, them to a minimum. And it's easier to use the wider block than it is the original top link. And then what I'll do is save that one for the next time I have to cut these. That way I always have a template. And once you get past all the setup and getting everything out of the way, you can see how quick this actually does go. Which is really nice when it's cold out. I can't tell you how bad my thumbs are burning right now just from the cold. I think it's like in the 20s right now. I haven't, I haven't actually checked. Plus, when these teeth spin, it's like keeping your hand next to a fan, which a lot of people, including myself, when I first got into this in the winter, didn't think about until it happened. I was like, holy cow, the table saw is even worse, which is why I'm just staying bundled up. And I think once I'm done with this one, we're going to pop the time lapse, and I think I am going to drag that heater up here before I still keep going. Dude, this is getting kind of brutal on the hands because this wood's gold too. Usually I'm a little closer to my blade, but since I know I'm wearing a coat, I mean, I'm keeping, like if I'm, if we're cutting right here, my hand is this far away. So, I mean, I'm a good 14, 16 inches away. I actually know a guy using one of these saws winter time like this. He actually had his coat wrap up in the blade and ended up losing his left hand. So, that's why I'm kind of uh, a bit of a safety Nazi. So, and my earbud just fell out. So, and we're gonna be cutting this one, then I'm gonna pop it to the time lapse. A result of all the blocks I need to get cut up. Right, now we're on to the table saw. This is currently set up for a different type of cutting, which gets kind of complicated, kind of quick. By that, you're going to grab a heavy jig specifically for what I want. so you can see what I'm talking about. Don't think they'll fall apart. And we're gonna have to put this on before I can do what I need to do over here. But before I do that, one project I do fully intend to have ready to go by this Hopefully summer. You know, I've only been working on getting stuff. I just I wasn't able to get it done before winter time was over. This is a type of what is known as a crosscut sled. You just take it back and forth. Once you get everything dialed in, which I'm not gonna really take the time to do too accurately because I'm not actually gonna do any cutting on this.
so what when I need these and specifically this type of tooth cut because these are both uh, test pieces what I do is hold it up here with the saw running just run it back and forth stick it on the there's a little nib here stick them on just run them through and once you're done there's offsets and all kinds of stuff you got to worry about which is why I'm not going into uh, detail on this particular type of deal right now like I said these are test pieces so they're uh, not quite lined up properly there's one side that is and I don't remember what side it was but some of the pictures I've got on Facebook from earlier projects you can see boxes with this type of joiner these are called finger joints very strong very reliable throw glue in between all those this thing will, you'll almost have to rip this board apart before it'll break at the corners and I've got a bunch of little boxes a, bunch of, a few bigger ones they all hold different types of card games and stuff in them. That uh, I call a family game night box set. I include it with games or without if you want to supply your own. It don't matter to me. But I need to get this blade stack out of here. This is called a data stack. And before you guys say anything, right here's the plug to my saw. So yeah, this is called a Dado blade stack, or Dado blade stack. It's two separate saw blades that are, this one takes about a quarter inch path out. This is the only time I will ever advise you remove a certain safety device as well, called a riving knife. Any other type of cutting, it should always be left in, which is that. And then I got two wrenches for my saw blade like I said we're gonna have to switch this out so you just break it loose when you're tightening up a saw blade like this you should never crank on it the direction of the blade turn will actually tighten this nut down even more you just want to snug it up about I usually do about an eighth to a quarter turn just so you guys can see those blades these ones are this is a really old set. They're actually super dull. I need to, these actually need to be replaced. I realized it, which is part of why I didn't finish last year, is I gotta find this specific size again, for that specific brand, because I really don't wanna have to put everything back together. But if I do, I do, because uh, it was a relatively inexpensive set and I got a Dewalt stack over there that does not match up. So if I got to redo the fence, well, it's another video at this point, so I'll redo the fence if I have to. But this here is my standard size blade. Those ones are eight inch, this is a 10 inch. This job site saw is the only one I've found. Anyway, I haven't looked hard. This actually has an arbor long enough for a dado stack for a job site saw. And when you're setting this, you always want the teeth facing you because the table saw the blade spins towards you and you just put a washer on the side run this nut on you can really see it's cold over here I do have the heater on the background I turned it down a little bit so you guys don't have to hear it it is taking a little bit of the edge off even though you can actually see my breath now but it's not doing much but it's not there to as hot as my house. Oh yeah. This size and this size are different. So yeah, all I've done is tighten this up finger tight. Take this. And it don't take much. It's just that one little jerk is all it takes. And this is they have guards that go over the whole blade. I don't like using them because they get in my way more often than they help. 
It does make this safer overall. I'll never advise you not use them, but if you decide to run a saw like me and you don't use it, for the love of God, leave a riving knife in it. So, I got a little lever in the back, pulls that out. That's installed and ready. Just drop this on, plug this back in. that out of the way. Um, right, and then I've got, because these are always going to be slightly different in size because they're rough cut and then uh, dried, they never dry consistently so you're always going to have a little bit of difference. I always adjust the height to the first one I'm going to do. I like my blade to stick up about an eighth to a sixty or an eighth to three sixteen seven inch over the top of the board. That way I know it'll always cut through. And then you just set your board up like this. Bring the fence over. You don't want it super tight, you want to be able to push it through easily. Like that, but you also see how the blade first starts to move a little bit when I stick it in. That is something there we go. That's a nice tight fit. So, yeah. Now, before I turn this on, I need to grab a box for my blank, so I will be right back. In fact, usually when I'm done, I just throw them in a milk crate. So, I gotta move something on the side of the saw. This being a mobile worksite saw, it has a, uh, it has the ability to stand up on end. There's wheels on this side that I can tip it up on, pull it around, there's a little quick uh, lifting handle that you can pull it with on this side. I just stick my basket on there. That way, when I'm done, I can just, I can grab it over, throw it in. This is the push stick that comes with the saw. It's got a holder on the other side of my fence here. This is where it lives. So if you ever see me using this and this magically appears, there's a little clip that sticks in that I can grab it and, I'm, and it's right there for quick access. I've got a few other tools for it, but I still find this is the most handy one of everything I've got. And ironically, it's the one that came with it. So I'm gonna cut up all of these. We're gonna cut this one down real time pop it over to time lapse and then I'm just gonna pound out everything we cut today and uh, yeah um, oh before I forget you can actually do cross cuts on table saws like this you have to have something that goes in at least one track to be able to hold it then you can I can make a guide it's called a cross cut sled that goes between the two I personally don't like doing it because that's what the miter saw is for. That's the biggest one I could afford on the market. And I've, I've never found anything that it cannot handle width-wise. So I think it does up to 10 or 11 inches. It's something like that. And usually if it is just a hair too wide, once you make your first cut, you just flip it over, line the blade up in the guide, pull it down, take it back, and it'll cut the little hanger on the other end but that's all advanced stuff that you really got to be comfortable with your tools so this is just the quick and dirty versions so yeah with that said I'm gonna get this ripping down just want to make sure I actually did hit record and sweet all right and here we go
little pieces like this up. This is actually big enough. I'll rip it down this way. So I'm gonna set these ones off to the side. And I actually make mini tops out of them. That way I don't throw anything away because uh, this wood's expensive and I don't like wasting it. So if I can help it, like, and here's a block that I found earlier. This is an example of one I can't use because of this hole in here. Sometimes you get those in the middle. So I'm actually inspecting every single block as I cut it, just to make sure that it's actually safe to put on the lathe. So don't think it's just one operation I'm doing. I'm actually worrying about three or four different things. Plus where my feet are, my hands are. This is the type of saw I lost a fingertip to right there. I actually still have that saw. It's, it lives in my basement, but uh, you got to respect these. But at the same time, well, yeah, you just got to respect them. But at the same time, don't be afraid of them. That's what I was trying to say. All right, so I'm going to pop this over to a time lapse and we're going to get these all fixed up. And during it, when you see me put the adjust that fence or check the fence, that'll be when I'm into the other board. So yeah, I will talk to you guys at the end. how you turn like two big blocks of wood into a bunch of top blanks. Sorry, not trying to cover this ugly mug up, but there we go. Now I should get better reviews. Nobody wants to see that. All right, yep. One completely full. This is two stacks high and that's the extra. So that's the basic uses of my two main stationary saws. Like I say, these are job site, they are uh, job site stands, so they're actually designed to move. But once you get them running, they generally don't. It's not a smart idea to let them move. And uh, not sure how well the time lapse captured the miter on the last Last cut I made with it, I actually had to pound off a uh, block that seized up in the blade. That does happen sometimes. Um, key there is just don't panic and uh, do not touch the trigger. Don't do it. It's bad news because if that thing throws, it's going to mess something up and it's going to hurt. Um, these saws got a lot more horsepower than you can stop with your bare hands. So if you're ever doing anything with power tools, remember they're not for Remember, they don't say sorry. They will cut through you just as fast as they cut through wood. So, um, I actually have a thing about doing a video just dedicated to me going off about safety because uh, it actually is something I'm a bit crazy about. But uh, yeah, with that said, it's cold. So, I'm going to hop off of here, run inside, thaw out and harass my dog while I edit this video together and turn on one of my favorite old TV shows. That, and I believe I've got, yeah, it's quarter to four, so I gotta be getting ready to leave for work soon, so. Yeah, that said, I'll see y'all later.